Are you ready? I know I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for MPC 3.0. Matter of fact, let's pull it up now. Here's my MPC software. I want to make sure it's going to work. I want to make sure the plugins I have in here, my VSTs, are going to work. They might have VST3. Now, we're expecting the MPC 3.0 soon, maybe later, sometime this year. I don't know. But I want to make sure I'm ready if it does come. I know I've been talking about this talk about a new MPC XL, a new MPC 1, a new MPC Mini? <laughs> anyway, something's coming. Obviously, Akai releases a brand new piece of gear every three years. <laughs> Everybody knows that. I mean, there are 22 MPCs. Well, they're not just waiting to put them out one at a time, right? So obviously, what's going on here is we must be prepared always. You never know. So what do I do? First of all, I make sure I've got updates that I've had in the past that work. Because you never know. So I'll get out of this one here. I've got a folder right here. And this folder has my updates in it. So I keep a folder with updates. And right here, these are my updates I keep here. I've got an update here. The latest one I've got here, the 11.8. I've got one here, 11.4 too. I like that work well, as well too. And I kept a couple updates, that's it. But I know they've been working, I have no problems. If you do, I hope you solved your problems. Let's go back to the MPC software, which is right here. And so in the MPC software, I want to make sure the VSTs are all cool, right? My thing is they might come out with a new 3.0 that accepts VST3, which would be great actually. So I'll go to here. I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to go to settings. Now here in settings, I open up settings and I want to look at my settings here. I've got stuff going on. Yep. I'm going to go to plugins. Now here in plugins, you'll see here I have library, audio, plugins, VST. I'm on a MacBook Pro with an M1 chip and it's an M1 Max. So I wanna make sure I get to use all that luscious space and power and the, it's efficient too that all these VSTs will work properly forever inside the system. So I'll come to here, it says VST folders. I'll click on a folder here, right? And this will open a folder here. And this is a folder with VSTs right here. So as you can see, as I scroll down this list, there are just VSTs right here, right? So I have a VST here and VST. I just go to these VSTs right there, right? Simple enough to do. And this is my directory for those VSTs. Let's close this cancel to close it. And now I have another VST folder below that folder. And it's right here. Let me open this folder up. This folder is not even open, nothing appears here. You know why? This is my VST3 folder. So the MPC 2.0 can't use VST3. So I hope they're gonna improve that also. If they do, it'll be great. So what I also do, to cancel that out too as well, I'll close this out too, is I wanna make sure that the VSTs I have do work and they're gonna work with my Apple Silicon or whatever you got, make sure they work. It's pretty simple. I've got an app I use called um, Architect. Now, I'll show you that right now. It's down here in my bottom, actually, right here. Where's it at? Where's it at? There it is right there. This is Architect right there. See that? And that's open. I can pull it up here and I open. it's open. You see the top of my window in the menu. This is it right here. And I can look at certain VST folders. So I'm going to put the MPC app aside. I'm going to hide it for a second. I'm going to go back to here. And I can look for VSTs I know. Now, I know where they are. You saw that already, right? So I go ahead and open. And so I know they're going to be in a library. As it said, I look for library. And library, I look for audio. I look at audio and look at plugins. I look at the plugins and I see VSTs right here. Pretty simple stuff here. It's pretty simple on the PC too as well. And these are the plugins that work for my MPC. Now, what I've noticed too is a lot of guys actually use these VST plugins. And they take them and they send them over to their standalone, which is okay, I got no problem with that. But the problem may be if you do that and then they give you an update, you wanna make sure you can search the problem out and not think because it's something else, not you. It might be you taking a VST and putting over there. The problem with VSTs is that there are too many of them and they're all gonna say they're beautiful and they work great. They're such small files, but how much power do they use? Will they work with everything in the system? Are they causing some sort of hiccup inside the system? This is a problem that guys really don't know. I check my VSTs with a certain app I just showed you here called Archichet. And so I've got that open here. And so through Archichet, I can just say, okay, I wanna open this, uh, let's see. Let's find something here that I know we got here that might work or might not work. Let's look at this DB33. I'll pull this up 
and then you see Archer Chet pulls it up here. It shows you here. It's not quarantine. It doesn't work with Apple Silicon, so it has been optimized for Apple Silicon. But it is 64-bit Intel and 32-bit Intel, so it will work with my system, and it will definitely work with the Apple and the MPC software together. There's no problem with that. So I'll go back to here again. I'll look at, uh, let's say, I've already checked out on the MPC software too, you know. So here's the MPC app. I'll pull it up with Archer Check. I'll come to here and I'll look at it. And it says here, it has been optimized for Apple Silicon. It says here also that the uh, MPC 2.0, as you can see the version right here too, it appears here, is 64 bit. It's not quarantined, so it's not told it can't work with all the system, and it has valid signatures for it, and it's notarized. So this is going to work perfectly inside my MacBook Pro. It is important for you to make sure the apps you have, and importantly so for the VST apps you have, that they work with inside your MPC system. When 3.0 comes here, you want to find out what the problems are and see if they're resolved. Now, once I know my VSTs are working and you've taken and put them inside your standalone, as some guys actually do, it's all cool. But make sure how many VSTs you have in there, you know what they are, you know where to find them, you know to probably even get rid of them if 3.0 has a problem, and then check your MC 3.0 again, and then sort of port them back over into the software to see which VST may give you a problem. So next what I want to talk about pretty much is just the MP3 idea. So a lot of guys have been using MP3s. And I saw that during some updates they had a problem using their MP3 files. Now MP3 files are files that are squashed down. They give you this file and some stuff is missing, right? And they get it and they make it easier for you to have the file to play back. And I don't suggest doing that because some people have had problems in the past. With new 3.0 coming out, you might have more problems. See, the problem is that for those people that use MP3s is that the MPC software, whether it's standalone or in my computer as a software inside your computer, it's a 32-bit floating point audio processing system. So everything must be 32-bit. So if I make a file, I make a file, I put it in here with 16-bit, 24-bit, whatever, I pull it in, it's going to say, okay, no problem, boom. It's gonna change it to 32 bit. It's gonna say, okay, I got that. Now, if you get an MP3 file, and it's actually this small, but when it expands, MP3 at 500 gigabyte can be this big, really big. And you don't know if it's that small in the beginning, you're just playing back a small section. So once it expands, it eats up a lot of space. You don't want that, it's a waste of time. You wanna make sure that the files you bring in are compatible with the software you're using so you have less problems. So when 3.0 comes out here, make sure what you've got is going to work with the system so you have no problems loading 3.0 and working with 3.0. That is MPC 3.0. Any questions? Hit me up on the website or down there below. And you know something? I'm old. I know all this stuff. So look, you should subscribe. There's no problem. Just press that button, subscribe, and I'll help you no matter what. Peace.